Es ist Samstag, der 31. Mai 2014. Wir sind hier in Kopenhagen gegenüber dem Marriott Hotel, wo derzeit die Bilderberg-Konferenz 2014 stattfindet. Ich spreche jetzt gleich in Englisch, äh, interviewe ich Professor Dr. Nils Herrit. Professor Herrit, you have uh, made important findings regarding uh, nanotermit uh, at, uh, at 9-11. Yeah, that is correct. Uh, you are referring to a scientific publication which uh, we published in, nine, in 2009, in April. It, it has been five years since it came out and it has not been reputed or disproved in any scientific journal in the five years since our publication. And to make it very short, what we found in the World Trade Center dust was the remains of what we call a thermitic material. Uh, it should not be taken too far. It is, it is a, some stuff which contains a lot of energy. And uh, the Americans distinguish between explosives and incendiaries. And incendi an incendiary is a substance which works, destroys by means of heat. Actually, it is a German discovery. Uh, the thermite reaction was discovered by the German chemist Hans Goldschmidt. In uh, 1893, he published that if you mix very finely divided aluminum, aluminium in, Ger in German, and uh, iron oxide or rust, rust, if you mix these two powders, and make them react, you get a reaction which is very violent in the sense that it develops an enormous amount of heat. And this reaction can be used for cutting steel on, or armor, panzer. So it is used in grenades and torpedoes for military purposes. It can also be used for welding. Actually, in, uh, in the Ruhr city of Essen, Uh, the thermite reactions was applied for the first time for welding of the tram rails of Essen. This is the first time that the thermite reaction was used for uh, a useful purpose. But it can also be used for military purposes and for cutting steel beams and steel columns. And this is our suggestion. The thermite was used also for the demolition of the three skyscrapers, as you may know, that there were three skyscrapers collapsing in World Trade Center, uh, the Twin Towers and Building 7. And there's no doubt that explosives were used. We, were n we do not know the chemical composition of these explosives. But our finding only indicates that there was something in the dust which shouldn't be there under normal building collapses. Um, is um, nano cement uh, also used um, uh, by, uh, for other controlled demolitions or uh, does, uh, is it normally only used in the military sphere? No, we, we don't know. Uh, it, we, have, we have no examples of commercial demolitions where nanothermite has been used. This, this is military research. These are military energetic uh, materials. It is not commercially available. In fact, thermite is used very rarely for commercial demolitions. Uh, it was applied for the first time in 1935 for the taking down of two steel towers in Chicago. Uh, but usually it's too expensive and in ordinary controlled demolitions, you know, the commercial companies, they use regular uh, cheap uh, explosives. We do not know of a recent uh, case of a controlled demolition where thermite was used. So this might be a hint that someone was, uh, who has access to nano thermite Thermite, possibly uh, for uh, army um, um, 
military? Uh, from from military um, might be involved in 9/11. Well, we are not speculating. This is not our duty as scientists. Uh, our duty is to collect evidence and uh, and supply the public with information which is solid. This is based on evidence and this is science, this is research. But I would say that the nanothermite story is not the most important observation regarding the collapses of the Twin Towers. Uh, if we if you if we zoom in on the third building collapsing 20 minutes past five in the afternoon as you may recall the famous building seven it came down in free fall acceleration and uh, which means that it came down as fast as a dropping stone and according to the fundamental laws of physics uh, it means that there is no energy for breaking of all the hundreds of thousands of steel beams and columns in the building. So this is a completely unambiguous scientific proof that we are dealing with controlled demolitions. And it takes months or half years in preparation. So uh, it, it proves the unfici- official conspiracy theory, you know, the story with Osama bin Laden and the 19 hijackers. It's false. It's scientific proof. And, and this conclusion is based on the oldest laws of science. We are talking about Galileo Galilei and Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion. And they, the official account for the uh, collapses of World Trade Center violates these fundamental laws. So I would say that is the prime argument against the official conspiracy theory. Um, Ace Baker um, says that there has been a a big uh, cloud of dust and that uh, nanothermite alone cannot explain uh, this this cloud of dust, that there must have been at least uh, something additional. But that's perfectly correct, and no, no one, no, no responsible scientist has claimed that the World Trade Center came down exclusively due to nanothermite. Uh, in, in my opinion and consideration, at least two kinds of thermite was used, because you have found steel beams which were sulfurized, that means they contained sulfur, and that is a strategy you use when you want to cut steel beams. We are talking here about a military kind of thermite, which is called thermate. It's spelled differently. And in thermate, you add sulfur to Hans Goldschmidt's thermite mixture and barium nitrate. And uh, it has the consequence that it it cuts through steel much faster. The thermate was used and explosives were used. We do not know the chemical composition of these explosives. They could have been thermitic, we do not know. And But where the nanothermite fits into the collapse scenario, uh, we, uh, we, do, we don't know. We, I have my personal hypothesis, and, uh, but it is speculation. Um. How much have you reached with your findings in policy, in uh, public uh, awareness? Well, our findings, at least it has given me personally plenty of recognition. And what I'm doing is spend most of my time traveling around and giving presentations on the collapses of World Trade Center, focusing on Building 7. I have uh, made more than 200 of these presentations in 14 countries, including Germany actually. I have not been to the rural area yet, but I would love to come back. You know, I lived there once in 1970 and actually was working, or I was a student, at the Max Planck Institute in Mülheim an der Ruhr and had a great time living there. Uh, but this is what I do, giving presentations of the collapses of World Trade Center. 
and uh, so what I would say is that you know there are two kinds of people regarding the official narrative of 9-11 that those who say well we know that the official conspiracy theory the official story is a conspiracy theory we know that it's false we know it's a lie and the other part of the population who says well I know it but I don't want to know it everybody knows that this is something we do not talk about which means that they know that there's something wrong everybody knows that everybody knows that everybody knows but nobody talks about it and this is the kind of situation which the elite has brought us into a society of fear and lies and this is one of the reasons we are protesting here about the Bilderberg meeting because these are the kind of, of decisions they are taking decisions right now behind these windows regarding the world even though I mean these are the Western European countries primarily NATO countries uh, but it is the Western elite meeting here I know they invited the Chinese because they're nervous uh, about the financial situation for good reasons the whole thing is going to crash very soon and uh, the outcome of this collapse we do not know we know it's going to be ugly and we know that the, the final situation will depend on enlightenment of the public and independent TV stations and news sources like you is what we are relying on, relying on to bring out the truth because the truth is the best defense for war there is no such thing as an honest war if you want to prevent a war you should all you have to do is tell the truth but the mainstream media they're lying all the time so we are here to tell the truth and uh, this is the best weapon for a reasonable society well, um, some of mainstream media are invited uh, to conferences like like Bilderberg so Maybe they, um, there are some issues they do not talk about um, because they are invited there. Yeah, quite correctly, David Rockefeller in 1991 came with a statement where he actually uh, thanked the editors of New York Times and Washington Post and Time magazine, all the big media outlets he uh, appreciated for their uh, discretion that they have kept silent about the Bilderberg meetings for these 60 years because as he said quite openly and explicitly that we could not get along with our plans for the new world order if we had been under the scrutiny of the press so the press is complicit in the crimes and all the wars and terror which has been haunting our society since Second World War. Um, um, you belong to the a key person who have challenged the official uh, story about 9-11. And, and um, on the basis of 9-11 and on the basis of that shock, uh, we have uh, heard about a war on terror and there has been much privatization and social decline. But I think the main thing probably is a war on terror. Um, have, uh, people, have you seen people or governments turning away from that concept because of learning that the uh, official story cannot be true. About learning, you know, well, you are assuming that they do not know. They know. All of them know. All the editors know. All the Germans, they know that this, we do not talk about this. They know they play along. Because, uh, because of the American military, basically and because of their, the interest of the elite um, because it, the war is the best money making machine ever this is the most profitable kind of business so the banks and the major corporations the manufacturers of weapons the weapon industry the military industrial complex they're all interested in us ordinary people fighting each other 
So they're setting up wars, they're staging wars, and one of the means by starting a war is terror. So the, the war on terror is based on a false premise. And 9-11 is the most obvious, blatant lie in our time. They really goofed this time. They messed up. The collapse of Building 7 is so obvious. Everyone can see that this is a controlled demolition. And once, if you've seen Building 7 once, there should be no way back in your mind because, uh, because you can fool yourself and that is very stupid. Many people do that and that's why I, our society is in such a state of fear and lies. Everybody's hiding out. Everybody's hiding and hoping that the storm will pass when they come out, but it won't. We have to confront the truth and without, without truth there'll be no peace. Many things. Maybe if we could finish this, you know, this is a t-shirt from, from uh, it's called Artists for Peace. If I turn around, you'll see in Danish the, the motto of this, of this association, and it reads, no peace without truth. And now I turn around, it's in Danish. Thank you.